Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to a special uh, episode of the Chaka Bros. I'm here with uh, Josh Gah. Um How you doing, Josh? Great, thanks. Yeah, man. Mm-hmm. So, uh, so Josh uh, just won the Octagon Four Open. How does it feel, Josh? To be honest, I was I was really of uh, like uh, I was really like nervous towards the end and really flustered because uh, the other Josh played really aggressively. He's a really good player. So I, I I was just like in a base like uh, throughout the second half of the game. So, you know, I, I'm right now I'm just, you know, like uh, like still trying to like uh, you know, come to terms with the with the fact that I won. <laughs> Yeah, that's, that's sweet. Uh, and you had to, you had to, of course, go through your your teammate and probably one of the greatest players in the world, Toby, right, on the way. Is that right? I I, I can guarantee you, ninety nine percent of the reason why I won this is because of Toby. First of all, you know he gave me his decks. I played both. I played two decks in this tournament, and both of it was one hundred percent he made. Even uh, but like I have a like, minimum input in the ice one, but the other one is one hundred percent he made. Oh, I, so what, what was the other deck you played? I know we'll talk about your mono ice deck, but what was the what was the other deck you played throughout the the Swiss? Throughout Swiss, I played his uh ice one. Oh uh, no no, a uh, wind water deck. Saint Lena and stuff like that standard unit okay, wind yeah. water deck. I saw I saw he was playing that the one with the the droid. Yeah, that's right, Cobra droid. Yeah. So what what made you guys switch from that? list to this list for your top 16 actually we came up with this list uh when i was in sri lanka so a few weeks ago right literally like probably one week before the 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 top 16 and we just decided that this is like super broken you know it's, it's literally there are some ways where you could about it and the the problem with the uh wind water list is that the wind water list can get problems if you you push them really really hard early, because you really need your backups and stuff like that for your forest to be big enough to be basically unkillable. Right, so you need for time your, to set up your Maria and your arcs. And... A very very important time to set up, and we might not have that. And this ice tag basically, you know, once you set up, you there's nothing you can do because me and Toby we are both huge fans of this card. We play like pretty similar style. Uh, and you know, no matter how good a player you are, if you have no cards in hand, there's there's not much you could do about anything. So, yeah. So so about that discard. Tell us about uh, Flan. How'd Flan do for you? Flan is obviously MVP uh, in this matchup, but uh, that most people think. Basically, I think one of the triggers for Toby creating this deck is because I was pushing him to uh, make a. I discard that. I keep showing him the one that uh, my variation of uh, Nathan Perez's discard deck from from NA, which you know Toby doesn't really like because you know this game you need to be from the way he say you need to be more proactive. You can't just gain advantage like randomly and be a control player, right? You have to actually sometimes push and stuff like that. It's only seven damages, so um, you know he didn't like that one. But then, you know, we got to talking about Sid, about Flan and stuff like that. And then he's like, you know what? If you and you sit them, it's probably, you know, you probably win the game. Right? So I think that, like, like, came out, gave him some inspiration or something. And then, you know, he came up with this amazing list. And obviously, FF6 engine is just insane. And the fact that I re- like Sensor is my favorite card of this opus. I think he's broken, you know, with with Lock especially. Uh, you know, Lock is a is a on curve three CP one CP forward when you have a when you have a FS six. So those cards are super broken. I feel, and you just like you put them all together, and with the consistency of being a mono deck, it's just really strong. And with Shiva also. Yeah, and so I and, I, and for those of you guys who don't know, I just read an article about like CP costs and I did notice that you called locks one CP and I think that that might be confusing to some of the listeners who are, who are newer to the game. So why is lock one CP? Because he makes you discard a card and uh, uh, each card has a two CP value no matter what they are because you have, you can discard to gain two CP. So when I play a lock, right, you, 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 you go down two CP and I leave a forward on the field. So. Right. Yeah. 
And I think that's, that's really important for newer players to understand for sure. Uh, and, and Locke also does that plan where you were saying, where Toby was saying that you can't just be a control deck and kind of sit around. Well, Locke pressures your opponent and makes them discard, right? Yes. So it's like, and it's like the best, it's the best control card. Yeah. The thing is, he's also very aggressive because you can't just leave it on the field, you know, because he's going right. to, I mean, like, we hit, he discuss you and stuff that is very strong. And he also has a, uh, it hasn't been, it, it's not, it doesn't come out often, but when it does, you can actually win games off the, off the special, even if it's not a, not a, uh, end hit. For example, you know, even if it's not the, the, the last hit or something, right. it could, it could actually win games in the middle of the game where the guy has like, for example, he had one card in hand and then you just like, you know, lock special him, hit him for one that card and sit or stun him, you know, right. things like that. It's yeah. just super, super broken. That's, that's interesting. So let's talk about the the other Sid in the deck, the Sid, the Sid, uh, the five drop Sid. I know a lot of people are they, they expect the banana Sid, but what about so how how was uh, Sid Austin for you? Sid Austin has been amazing. You know, I I I actually use it every game, and uh, the video will come out soon. By the end of the game, where Josh was playing the the last game with Josh, I actually hit an expert Sid Austin, which killed an A one. And then I play another C Austin for game, you know. Even though, you know, I had a C Austin in hand, so and he had no cards in hand. So no matter what the Amon is gonna be dead. But uh the fact that I hit an experts Amon when he had no cards in hand, no cards in hand really sealed the deal for me. Like at that point, there's no way he can come back. Yeah. And and, and that's what, another thing I like about your list is the 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 also the other experts is the other Shiva. How good was that? The Opus Four Shiva? This one, I think you know, Toby is the experts master. You know, you have to, you have to ask him for for experts. Is not obviously you know personally, I'm not a big experts fan, but you know, I I play so many practice games with Toby and stuff like that, right? And I I mean, like I I'm sure no one knows this, or maybe some people knows this, but Toby, be clever and sometimes he he will tell you like the next guy is going to be experts like that. Oh, literally, yeah, he has done that like multiple times. He has told me like, "Wow, draw next turn and stuff like that." Like there are games where I was uh, just playing on on, on off turn, like casual games versus other players or stuff like that. Uh, where you know we are testing new decks and stuff like that. And he could tell me like, "What cuts is I'm gonna see next?" You know, or even when I'm playing versus him, like he would tell me what cuts he's, go he's gonna see next. Like there are times where he would like mill me, mill my experts off my off the top of my deck. For example, and, and yeah, so I, I don't know. I mean, like, you know, I think when you have that much experience, you just have like a kind of like a like a like a mind body spirit connection to the cut to the yeah. deck and stuff like that. But I'm not at that level yet, so I don't know. But <laughs> yeah, I'm super confident in the final matchup, right? right. Even uh, light lightning ice matchup, although no one believes in me, including you. <laughs> oh, I, I believe in you, I just you know. I, I like I you know I'm gonna go out and say that I like the ice lightning deck better, but it, I, I voted for you, Josh. So. <laughs> sure. Uh, he, I like every everything is gonna die to my Shiva. Yeah. I mean, so I I'm not worried. I I I basically in this deck I try to hold every single card, every single Shiva, every single summon in my hand because it hard counters him. Lightning will get Zalera. You know, uh, you know, Shiva and stuff like that. It, it's very, very painful for him to, to 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 do anything to attack. Another card that seems like it would be just an absolute all star is Vayne. Like how 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 is Vayne against him? Uh, Vayne, I didn't use it. I didn't draw him up because he played really way too fast for me. Right. Honest. To be honest about this matchup, I would say that I actually thought that I would. Like uh, even though there are people who who a lot of people think that you know he's gonna he's gonna win because his deck is better and stuff like that. I actually think his deck is is definitely not like not comparable to to this. Oh yeah, and let, let me. Be, I don't think that his deck is uh, like favorable in this matchup. Actually, you know when especially I mean you, we've done a lot of analysis analysis. Sorry, and I know that I have even I played a few test games with you and, and we saw that your deck uh, does seem to punish his deck pretty hard. But I, but in the overall metagame, I just really like having access to Al Sid. 
against other decks. Yep. And, and the mirror match, certainly, yeah, Shiva's going to kill everything, and then you have Duke Lark and he does not. How big of a factor do you think that was? Duke Lark was huge, especially in my last game, I think. It's like he literally just can't kill my guys at all. But Josh Josh played really well. He really knows how to push the aggression. And I, I almost found it impossible to respond. Like the first game, which I lost, like I was in like, I was really like, uh, like every turn I have to like plan so far ahead and stuff like that. Even think like it drained a lot of my uh, mental energy game. So I, I needed a break in the second one. And, and you know, I, I should have, you know, if I, I mean, like, it was still kind of, like, winnable, like, there are things I could do, but I'm playing it out, to be honest. I, I should have just, like, let it go and then play the next one, which is what I do, did versus Toby. Um, yeah, um, so so what about changes to the list? What would you make if you had to make some changes? Oh, here's the thing. We wanted, I, I told you this, right? I, I wanted to cut out uh, one Celeste, so I only have one Celeste for another Genesis. But it is it's too crucial. Like uh, that, special. that's nice. the special. I use it once versus Toby, which actually won me the game. Right. I used the special one time, and actually like uh, really won me the game. And uh, so after I decided to keep it in. And the thing is, the most relevant thing about Celeste is obviously a free effect, and the fact that it's a four four cost uh, AK forward. You know, that's the most like like he has a really nice body. Right. I, this is one of the biggest thing about her, but everything else is like, I, I feel it's a bit lackluster. So I, I, I decided to keep it in in the end. And, you know, there are a lot of things, I don't know, it, this deck is very, very hard to cut because the list right. is almost perfect. I might want to add one extra uh, discard bar as a backup, you know? Okay, the, the Opus 4 one? No, not Opus 4 one, not a discard 2 because it costs too much CP. Uh, okay. But the disc one. Oh, okay, okay, okay. One of those, yeah. All right. Because what, there are nothing where I could have done yeah. something. Mm -hmm. So what, 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 what are you fearing? So let's say somebody they expect a lot of ice. What deck should they bring? What, what are you afraid of? Honestly, I, this deck, I, I really, I really don't think I'm afraid of anything, especially mono lightning. I have a, I, I think I told you this, but I think I have a almost 100 percent win rate versus mono lightning. Right. Uh, with this deck. Because uh, thing at all, I ran back up really quick because of the consistency of that. Because of all the searches, all the one CP backups I have, I have several one CP backups. So I, I will never, I almost never will be off curve. And if I'm ever off curve, I'll play Flan. You know, so my 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 value is just ramps up really quickly. Flan, right? I'll make you discard all your hand, and lightning depends on the LC combo, right? If I make you discard everything, there's there's literally nothing you can do, and you can't. Come back, you cannot out fight my guy because my guys are much bigger. You know, and yeah. you know, and some some guys you just have to block like like lock or Genesis and stuff like that. You know, and it's just it's very, very brutal for them. So what about uh what about the Emperor? Is the the Emperor seems like it might be sort of a pain for this deck. Did you get to play against it at all? I would say the one deck that actually kind of has a counter, which I actually got beaten by once, is a by but I know how to beat it now. It's a mono water deck with Emperor. And what they do, really just pull an Emperor down the field and uh, put all their you know, normal water stuff and just don't attack. Don't even like try to hit me. Don't don't dial your guy ever. And on top of not dialing your guy, you leave Astrogen open every single turn. So just keep putting guys and wait for a Kanazu combo. Yeah, that, that does sound like a, a winning play too, yeah. I was thinking the same thing. I was thinking like uh, another card that seems kind of scary would be Fairy. Um, a a, a well-timed yeah. Fairy might be pretty scary for your deck. Yeah, that's true, but but literally no. But if you try to actually like battle, I'll battle like the the Mono Water deck. Like even through Ming Wu and stuff like that. Like if you dial two of your guys, like Terra Special, you know, I kill two guys. Like you know, I can I can battle. I don't mind battling, you know. But if you were to just sit there and wait for Kanaso with Astrogen open, so I can't double Shiva you. I can't Shiva and Shiva another time, right? You know what I mean? I can't Zelara you. I can't I can't do anything. I'll be in trouble. But then, you know, I know how to, I learned how to counter that now. I actually play against that in Japan, in Tokyo, and I actually like 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 really beat the guy really hard. 
Because because so, I, I don't you have to push really hard so early. That's actually my next question for you is what's it like playing in Japan versus playing back home? I know you had posted uh, before about how quiet it was, um, but what how, what's it like? Like is the meta game different? Like what what's totally different about Japan? Okay, I'll tell you this right. Japan plays very uh steady. They play very uh very meta, and they play like what I consider like, really right. So they play very efficient and very like well, you know. You know what I mean? And they play their decks very well. And what I don't like about my country, like Singapore, is it seems like, okay, first of all, everyone plays the same way. They play Mono Lightning with El Cid and they just wait for you to put the guys down. And they just like, like really, I'll say like a really like a pussy ass way of playing, you know? <laughs> you just keep waiting for shit to happen, like like stuff and it's really annoying. And Japan, they, they know how to actually like, push you, they play like forward, back up, forward, back up, they push you, they they, they kind of control the game to s- kind of like swing in their favor by trying to play more efficient than you and like outplay you with like some summons and stuff like that. Yeah, it's very interesting. And I'm really lucky to play in Japan because I play against a lot of Ice Lightning. What I need to do, for example, because I play in Japan, I know I need to hold all my Celeras and my Shivas and stuff like that because they were just like coming with a lightning out and stuff and try to like you know destroy me basically yeah um yeah so is the is the opus three shiva good in that matchup as well the the one that doles two Shiva really needs to be played well i think and yes it's, it's relevant because without it i, would, I mean I, without it i would have lost 100 percent. there's no replacement for it you know, because it, it takes away, like, uh, two two damages sometimes, you know, when they're able to remove you or dial you or some, something like that. Yeah, awesome. All right, Josh, um, any shout-outs that you want to say? I know I'm sure you have a few shout-outs. Shout-out to Toby, who I wouldn't have got so far without him because basically he did, like, 99% of the work, right? Like, you know, he gave me the tag. He taught me how to play. He, he told me all the tricks and stuff like that. And, like, also, he actually gave me some very specific advice regarding to playing against Joshua because, you know, he played with Joshua quite a few times and stuff like that. He knows, like, some of his habits, like, so to put it. Like, for example, you know, he, he told me that Joshua rarely blocks, you know? So, literally, I think the three games I played with him, he blocked a total of one time. Right, okay. And, he likes to be pretty, pretty aggressive. And the block was uh, was really, like, uh, amazing because he gave him many turns and stuff like that. Like, it was really good block. And uh, what I was going to say is uh, he... And, yeah, so Toby really helped me a lot in preparation and stuff like that. Although he didn't play a single practice game with me, I just want to say that. Because... I, I don't know what happened, but yeah, he didn't play a practice game with me for this matchup, but he told me a lot about Josh and stuff like that. So yeah, uh, I want to shout out to uh, uh, a few guys who I learned from uh, when I started the game. For example, I'll shout out to, uh, uh, what's his name again? Wait, Australia. Yeah, because he, he gave me my first like try in playing the game. And actually a funny story. Who, who, who I'm, I'm sorry about rambling. No, it's okay. Nate, uh, no, uh, no, not Leighton. Uh, I, I need to check. Jason, Jason. Ah, Jason. From... Okay. Yeah. Okay, so a funny story, right? I was playing, Jason was on stream, and I went on stream to like play with him. I was like, hey, can I play with you on Octon? And he was supposed to play against Josh, Joshua. And then I was like, and then Josh was like, wait, no, I'm Nate, right? And then Nathan, and then, I mean, uh, uh, Jason's like, no, 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 you got to give Noobs a chance. <laughs> you know, and it's funny because now I'm, I'm playing against Joshua a few months later, a few weeks later. That's funny. Maybe without that chance, you wouldn't have been where you were. And, you know, he, he played some games with me. He actually he also, like, pushed me to play a bit faster and stuff like that. And uh, also, you know, with you, you helped me with some of my games. Um, and, you know, always really nice to talk to you and stuff like that. And uh, I want to yeah, shout out to... Always really nice to talk to you, too. It's good. And I want to shout out to Josh Garner, who who also helped me with uh, with uh, with good chats and, like, talking about some of the decks and stuff like that. Shout out to Nathan Perez, who shared with me his discard list. 
So I, because I really like the Discord playstyle, so he shared me his list and we talked a bit about the, the game and stuff like that. And I'll shout out to Alex Hancocks also for uh, also uh, talk like talking some decks with me and stuff like that and teaching me a, a little bit about the game and playing with me on Octon. I think he was pr probably the first player I played with ever on, on OCGGN. Yeah, those are all I, really, I, uh, cool dudes. Uh, very lucky, very lucky to have him to, to teach me the game and actually like show me a lot of ways that I could play and teach me even how to use the app itself. So, yeah, all right. Well, hey, thanks for joining me, Joshua. One more shout out, sorry. Sure, yeah, one ahead. more shout out. Shout out to my girlfriend, too, because she helped me prepare every single match out. We actually do every single day that I have to play against, and she played with me most of the time. And we she actually sacrificed her sanity to, <laughs> for me, Toby. Yeah. Because we have to play that handsome mono ice match, like mirror match, which is every day, so it's oh, a wow. nightmare. That's that's awesome. Yeah, my, my wife also plays and helps me test. That's awesome. All right, yeah, right. All right brother. Yeah. Thanks for joining me, man. I appreciate it, dude. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Later. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully I see you around here soon. See you. I hope hope to see you at the Wolves or something. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Take care. You too. Bye.